Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys a few ways that you can blur the background of your videos out. So although there are several ways in order to achieve this in DaVinci Resolve, the area I'd prefer to focus on for this would be over on the color page. So on the color page, we have several tools available to us in order for isolating parts of our video out from the rest of what we see on the screen. Uh, one of those is the power windows. So if we click over here where you have a little oval shape, we can add a power window in order to select part of our video that we would want to keep around without the blur. And then we can isolate that from the rest of everything else in order to blur out the background. So the shape of this person, I would say, is roughly oval shape. So we can take the circular power window and then adjust the shape to match the woman. So let's go ahead and stretch this oval taller. And then we can rotate it with the center handle, the one that gives you a little turnaround symbol. So I'll angle that to kind of fit the body of the woman a little bit more, stretch it a little bit wider, and maybe stretch it on the bottom a little bit more as well. Another thing we can do here is stretch these outer boundaries. Um, and this will allow there to be a little bit more of a transition between where the blur starts and where it ends. Rather than having it create a sharp line where everything on the outside is blurred and everything on the inside is blurred, and then everything on the inside is not blurred, it instead will transition between these outer and inner lines. So let's position it about there. And if we take the video clip and hit play, what you'll notice is that over the duration of the clip, uh, the woman's body moves slightly out of frame. However, the movement is quite slow, so this can be easily rectified by using the tracker tool in Resolve. So if we go to the start here, and then we go over to the next tab over, the tracker. Then we can come down here on the tracker tool, hit track forward. And ideally what's gonna happen is that the power window is going to follow the object located inside of the tracker. Um, so this is all automatically calculated by DaVinci Resolve's program. And you can see how it just follows the woman around on the screen on different variables as well. So it will pan, tilt, zoom, rotate, and do 3D movement automatically. It is possible to uncheck those. If for some reason you don't want the power window to rotate, uh, maybe have performance issues. So if we go back to the start and hit play, you can just see that it does a really solid job here of tracking the body movement across the shot. So that's probably going to work well for our purposes here. Now, um, you'll see up here in the nodes section that this power window has everything inside of that window selected. And then the outer areas, the background in this case, is not shown here. So what we want to do is have a second node here, which instead of having the inside of the power window is going to have everything on the outside. So I'm going to right click, add a node, a corrector node. I'm going to feed the green output to the green input and the blue, which is the alpha output. Uh, to the alpha input here. Now we can go over to the keying tab, which is two over from the tracker. And then we can click this little key here, mat mask, to reverse what was on the first node. So we can see how on the second node now we have the background, but everything inside of that power window is not showing. Uh, we also want this to be fed to the final output. So I'm going to take this and feed it over here. So now we have the input on the color tab coming into this first corrector node. And that information feeds to the second corrector node where we can modify the background. And if we want to modify the uh, and if we want to modify the area where the woman is sitting, we can do that on this node. But we want to blur out the background. <clears throat> so I'm going to click on the second corrector node here and we can go over to the blurring tools one over on the left here and we can just ramp up the blur radius. So the more blur you want, the higher you increase this. And you can see how the area where the woman is sitting is not blurred, but everything outside of that is pretty much blurred. So this is one way that you could do blurring inside of DaVinci Resolve. It's not going to work out perfectly here, of course, because the shape of an oval does not perfectly match a person's body shape. One option would be to use the pen tool to create a custom power window that might more appropriately go around the body of the person. However, the more points on a tracker window, the harder it's going to be for it to actually track. We can give it a shot here. So let's go over to the tracker with this new power window. I'll go ahead and hit play. Uh, well, first we have to adjust it for the first frame. So let's move those points around. We can also adjust the softness here if we want to remove that hard edge on the blur again. Now let's go over to the tracker tool hit play and we'll see if it works out here so so far it's working pretty nicely so if you're willing to put a little more time in you can manually create your own power window 
So if we go back to the start, hit play, we can see that this is working pretty decently, actually. So there's one more option I want to show you guys in this video, which is that if you have the luxury of recording your person with a green screen and you want to splice in another background, then it will become even easier in order to perform operations on the background than the foreground because they'll already be two separate entities. So if I take a green screen person, put it on the video timeline here, and actually we should put it on video track two because video track one is going to be our background. So now we can go over on the color page and then we can get rid of this green background by using the qualifier tab. So I'm just gonna simply select this green background with the selector tool. So now you can see only the green background is selected. We're gonna to wanna to reverse that. So I'm going to go over to the keying tab and then down here for key output, I'm gonna invert it this time by clicking right here. Now we need to add in the alpha output to make sure that this green background does not show in the final video clip. We can see it's still there in the edit page. So I'm gonna right click add an alpha output and now we just need to connect the alpha output to the final alpha output. Uh, now in this case, you can see there's still a little bit of a green edge around the person and that's not gonna look very good. So, so there are several ways we can get rid of that. One would be to go over to the qualifier tab. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're doing here. And now we can increase the denoise in order to blur it out a little bit. And we can add a little bit of denoise to blur it a bit. And then if we increase the clean white setting, we should be able to trim just enough off of that edge so that it's a lot harder to tell that there was originally a green screen there. Playing around a little bit with the in out ratio, increasing that may also help for the same kind of reason, just shaving a little bit on the outside. And although this may trim a little bit of the person's body, it probably is worth it overall to get rid of the green. So by playing around with the setting a little bit there, we have a much better end look. So uh, let's add in a background video. So we just drag a clip onto the timeline and we'll get them snapped together. I'll enable snapping and position it right at the start there. Okay, so now we have our guy doing the okay sign and the thumbs up, but with a background in. So now it's gonna be a cinch in order to blur out the background. We could do that over on the color tab, but if we just wanna blur out the entire video, the entire background video that is, we can just go over to open effects, scroll up to the top here, and we have many different blurring options available to us. So you can just hover over the different blurs, find one that you like, and we can just throw it on the background clip. So by doing that, the background is now much blurrier and it's evenly applied all the way across the background clip. And I wasn't originally planning to do a zoom blur, but on the original clip, uh, the one over here with the woman, we might also be able to use a zoom blur on the edit page to get a similar result. Let's try throwing the copy of that clip onto the timeline over here, and let's add a zoom blur. So with the zoom blur, we can go into effects, and we could increase the center exclusion in order to make it so that the blur does not apply to this inside area. We're gonna to wanna to adjust the location on where that zoom blur is starting from though. So we can click here and go to open effects overlay. So we can now see the location of that zoom blur. So if we position it kind of over here, maybe increase the center exclusion a little bit, then we can also get a pretty decent result on the blur. Though we're gonna to need to keyframe it here for the position since the person is moving across the shot. So let's go to the first frame here and we'll adjust the position to where we want it. So you can see that a new keyframe is automatically created. If we go a little bit further, we can just adjust the position here using the gizmo. So that's open effects overlay, if uh, you didn't see that before. And we just keep going. This in between area needs a little bit of an adjustment and then we can manually adjust it over here. And then one more time at the end, maybe it doesn't need it there. So let's go back to the start of the clip here, hit play, and we can see that's not too bad of a result there, being able to keep the blur off of this area, uh, but definitely blurring out the background. And we can increase or decrease the zoom amount if we want to emphasize that effect or to lower it down a bit. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video on how you can blur the background in DaVinci Resolve. So you'd definitely also be able to achieve similar results if you went into the Fusion page and played around with the nodes there, but that would require a bit more effort. So I would give some of the techniques we tried in this video a shot first. 
So that's going to be it for this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.